All right, guys, we're giving away this 1200 horsepower turbo Trans Am, and today is a double entry day. Friday, go get your entries. Every dollar you spend gets you two entries to win this thing. You guys can be taking this home over at lsnasty.com. It's the first link in the description below. We got a bunch of brand new merchandise. We got Nasty Co stuff, Small Tire Outlaws, Nasty Racing, hat, shirts, stickers. You guys name it. We got it. lsnasty.com. You guys can be taking this thing home. We're giving away this 1200 horsepower turbo Trans Am. Go to lsnasty.com. Alright guys, we're up here at TCAM Performance, we're going to be hitting the dyno a little bit later, but before we head over to the dyno, I want to talk to you guys about some of the machine shop stuff. Here you guys know TCAM Performance does really all of our machine work. They do a million different platforms, you know, LS, small block Chevy, small block Ford, big block, Coyotes, Demons, I mean you name it, they do it. Uh, from street car to race car to world record stuff to big horsepower stuff. I mean, you guys just saw the small block Ford that they built for us. Came out here with an 88 millimeter turbo, made 2,400 horsepower. Uh, we've shown a bunch of stuff around, you know, the different things that they do here from the CNC stuff, top fuel hoops, engine assembly stuff. We've briefly talked about uh, the line hone, and this is something that we really haven't shed a lot of light on, but very important. Every single step of the process is very important. Kevin, everyone up here, their their motto is power is in the machine work, and that is very true. So we're gonna let Kevin talk about you know some of the stuff that they got going on here. For all you engine nerds out there, you guys see a billet block here in the line hone. You guys probably got a chub right now. For those of you guys that don't know what's going on, this can educate you and shine a little bit of light of you know what really goes into just getting the engine to run. You know, making sure it's correct and you can go out there and fire it up and have a chance to even you know, take it to the dyno. Cause there's a lot of things that go into building a race car behind the scenes. Most people outsource, they come up here to TCAM because they do such a great job. You guys don't understand how meticulous and how time consuming and how important and how specific their job is to get it done right. You know, you guys see all these engines and everyone's out here running. You know, when you're getting a piece here from TCAM Performance, it's gonna be done, it's gonna be done right. So Kevin? Yeah, so basically on a line hung like this, pretty much what we're gonna do is Zach's gonna get up here on the table a lot of times you'll put it over on this table actually and measure things first. And line home, what we're doing is making sure the housing board is round and straight and making sure it has the proper clearance. So when we do that, every job here has a tablet. And as you can see, we'll go down here to line home. Zach's working on that and he's gonna fill in all your information on your housing board, crank journal, everything of what it actually measures and what it is. And everybody sees this on their on their invoice, even when they pick their stuff up. So on the line hone, <clears throat> first and foremost, Zach's about done with this job actually. But first and foremost, he'll put the caps on. He's gonna measure the housing boards with no bearings in it. He's gonna see where we are on size, whether it's round, egg shaped, or whatever. And then a lot of times he'll have to take the caps off and he'll have to grind the caps, reface the caps, and get it down. And once you do that, then you got to come back in here and hone and then make the holes round again. That's the only way you can, you know, true the holes back up, of course. So when we do that, he's shooting for a size. Now the way we do it, we're going to, we're taking the customer's um, motor in consideration as a whole, meaning what old system he's going to have. Is it going to be a wet sump, dry sump? How much power is the guy going to make? And based on experience and stuff that we've done for several years now, um, what we're going to do is, all right, well, let's set it up this amount of clearance. We know this works. We've done this a hundred times <clears throat> and that's how we do it. So <clears throat> in doing that, like I said, once the housing board is right, he gets that perfect. Then he's going to put each bearing in. He's going to measure the crankshaft. He's going to know exactly what clearance we got. It's all documented. And again, as a machine shop, us, TKM or any other shop out there, whether it's, you know, the Soma, Proline, e anybody. You know, the only thing they can control is what they can control, right? So when we got the mains right, they're on the right size, you got the right amount of clearance in here. So the only thing that we can't control is whether or not the customer actually put oil in the motor or not enough oil in the motor. Okay, so when when a main bearing gets hurt, it's, it's normally always one of two possible things. 
It's either not enough clearance or not enough oil. That is it. All right, so if you tear the main bearings out of thing, the first thing I'm gonna look at is look at the data oil. You know, is oil pressure good from the start of the pass to the end? When you're on the parachutes, does oil pressure dive off? I mean, there's all kinds of different scenarios here that can wreck a motor and it's really nothing bad. I mean, we've had guys, <clears throat> they, not, they don't get their pickup clearance set right and they're starving the motor of oil. We've had guys simply not put enough oil in the motor. We've had guys not put oil in the motor, mm -hmm. like literally. We've had guys flip the oil filter relocation and not get no oil in the motor. Well, they, they got their gauge says they got all kinds of damn oil pressure, but there ain't a lick of oil mm. going to these mains or anywhere in the motor. So therefore that's a good way to wreck a motor too. Um, also, I mean, you could just run a motor for a while and I mean, these things get tired. We were super lucky with the black sheep engine. You know, we made 300 some passes, like unheard of. Like, it, it, I don't want to mislead anybody, but if I came to you and said, hey, I want to go bottom fours for 300 passes, you'd laugh at me. So the <laughs> fact that we did it, I mean, the stars aligned and it was great, but I mean, the, the Red Lobster was a perfect example. You know, we, we got a car with a motor that we had no idea how many passes were on it and the oil pressure wasn't great. We kind of banded it and the next thing you know, it was, it was just tired. It was just tired. So, I mean, it's, it's part of it. I mean, these, these things are, they're tools and they have a lifespan. I think a lot of people need to understand that. And I know one thing like what Kevin's saying is I've done it before. I put four passes on a brand new motor. I had an outside variable destroy the motor. That's part of drag racing. And I think a lot of people don't really understand that, you know, you can take a brand spanking new engine and one pass you can destroy it. Again, it goes back to your, you know, just focusing more on the bearings themselves. So, you know, you got a lot of people tearing up their thrust bearing. Well, if you think about it, everything that's happening in this motor, you know, the explosion here, the power, you know, it's trying to shove the crank to the bottom, right? What, what shoves the crank this way? Torque converter. Torque converter. There's nothing you can build in this motor, nothing we, no, there's no special can we can put in here to tear the damn thrust bearing out. It don't work that way. The only thing pushing on this thrust bearing is simply the torque converter pushing this way. All, everything else is just trying to shove it down. So typically it's a clearance issue, oil issue, again, or converter is ballooning. There's all kinds of things that can wreck this bearing. Um, we do have a, this one actually is a machine for a roller thrust and that's a common deal that John even runs as yeah, well. If you guys are coming up here and, and you're getting an engine <clears throat> built, you know, they'll give you the option you want to run a roller thrust. I would 100% recommend it. Uh, we've run them without them and then, you know, we've had some issues. I'd say it's it's not something you should use to band-aid, you know, a converter issue or you have really high converter charge pressure, but it can help. And sometimes it'll give you just enough time to realize it so you can fix it before you hurt your motor. Um, also, something to think about, a lot of guys are using less crank than they probably should. So at some point, you know, you gotta realize that, say you got 3,000 clearance here, right? That's 3,000 total clearance. I mean, you got one and a half foul on each side. If your crank is in there flexing, because your shit's detonating or anything like that. This dragon, well, all of a sudden, your one and a half foul on one side goes to zero. Yep. Crank touches off, damn, you got a torque bearing. That so, tune-up ain't always spot on. No, it as ain't. much as they want it to be. I mean, there, there's a lot of factors that are, you know, affecting the injector failure. I mean, you go lean, yes. you hurt something, the injector hangs open. I mean, there's so many different things that affect um, really the engine. I mean, it's just. It's, yeah, and you know, when, when we're machine motors, I mean, like, like, like we're trying to get across that, you know, we, we can only control what we can control. We can't control it. Oh, a, after this point, we put the crank in it and torque it. That's all we can control. We, we can't control to put oil in it. can't control to put water in it. I mean, assuming it has oil. Um, we can't control that. So there's all kinds of things out there, variables that will destroy a motor that you know, we ain't got no control of. Or any, or any, any, any shop for that matter. It's easy to go back and blame an engine shop. Oh yeah. I mean, it's the engine shop and the tuner. They get the blame for everything. And you got them both right here. I'm, so I'm the common he, he is He has got a big target on his back. I mean, there's been times I've called up here, brand new engine, put it in the car. I'm going out messing around the street and I forgot to turn the fan. I looked down and that thing's 260. And I text Kevin, I was like, hey, the engine still works at 260. I know it's not supposed to be there, but she's still living. You know, there's it's stuff like that. I mean, it, it's so simple and it's racing. You're gonna tear some shit up. There, there, there's been several, several cars come here. And I mean, a handful of cars or more over the past couple of years here that they come here to dyno and they get them off, we unload them. Typically what we'll do is we'll go out there, we'll do the initial tune, set time, we'll do things like that. And then what I do is we'll start driving, start revving, make sure everything's good. When they're saying, you know, I've looked down at their um, 
temperature gauge and it's it's good. Well, you know, 160, 170, no, no problem. Well, hell, you go out there and touch the radiator, it's ice cold. So <clears throat> you don't know how many times, more than once, more than twice, more than three times. The water pump, it happened this week. The guy's water pump was not circulating. He yeah. had no idea. His his water tank, his head, you couldn't even touch it. But the, the sensor was in the radiator. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it, so so the guy don't even know. And there's a lot, I mean, it's it's experience and you gotta, sometimes you gotta, you know, learn the hard way. And I've learned the hard way a bunch of times and <laughs> we don't ever say anything like this to discourage people, but I guess just being aware of the, the risks and the reality of it. I mean, it's not always, a perfect world out there and you're gonna tear some shit up I mean, I've tore up plenty of shit that's why I keep coming back here to Kevin because he gives me these nice pieces and I'm like the product tester around here I take cranks that are not supposed to make 1600 we're making 1600 I take a thousand horsepower engine package and I make 1600 with it you know like HB rods the first black sheet remember? yeah I mean we, we went four thirties with an H beam rod like wouldn't recommend it but we did it uh, and I'm okay with trying it out you know uh, but some people that's why it's it's good they have a lot of knowledge so when they recommend parts highly recommend you listen to those guys because they're not upselling you they're just giving you what you need and uh, yeah, could you do it with less maybe but for how long who knows like we said earlier oh well, them trying to talk you into a better set of rods does not mean we're making five hundred dollars on those rods it means we know where you're going with this combination. We're trying to get you in the parts that already get you there and you, you, you shouldn't have to worry about them. But when you're out there slinging H-beam rods out with 40 pounds of booze, pedal, 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 and you sling the rods, how can you be mad at the engine builder? We didn't make the rods. We didn't make them. But we try and get people into better valves. We do it all the time with valves. Try to get people into better valves. They think we're just an upsell. No, we know where you're going with this deal, and we know what you're going to raise. So we try to put you in a little bit nicer parts. I mean, it's simple, man. We, we see it all the time, broken stuff. You know, you break a rod and it wipes the block out. Or we've seen it break a rod and not tear up a whole lot. You don't know. Well, I was just talking about the mains earlier. You know, if crank flakes or lack of oil, anything that happens to this thing and it starts to smoke these bearings, well, that heat gets in here, you, you can see stuff blew up. That heat actually draws these housing boards close. So then when you go to measure your clearance, like, oh, dang, this thing was tight. Well, the, it wasn't tight, the damn heat drawed it all in. And that goes right over here, same as the silver home. All right, <clears throat> so we use diamond stones, pytho brushes on pretty much every job in here. Cornbread personally hones all these, except for when he's out, and then I try to help him out. <laughs> but anyways, um, so we cannot, so, so you got a cylinder that's distorted. Well, one thing that's going to distort on this power, they normally always sort of blown out at the top. Tops, uh, depending but, on water jackets. But, you know, besides that, we can tell if a motor's been overheated, like literally just by water, simply because he'll put the diamonds, stuff, the in, diamonds there. in there, and this machine just, and it's you just can all see all it. over the place. This little graph here is, a, is, is supposed to represent the cylinder walls. Well, when it's been really overheated, they're just jagging and, mm. and the hole is just doo -doo 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 -doo. and this thing's rattling and shaking <laughs> and everybody's looking like, what are you doing? <clears throat> That's how bad the cylinders were. And it can be from water temperature, not circulated water pump, or your tune up is way too hot and start to tear stuff up. 100%, like for instance, we can't hone a block jack up. I mean like that. So in other words, the block we've Let's say it's a box we've already done. Guy yeah. goes out there, overheats it or detonates yeah, it all to hell. Cylinders all are all the shit, but right. I mean, we couldn't hunt it that way for one. And then when you want to take your rings and mm -hmm. have them put in a fixture and measure the ring gap, it ain't gonna work because it was way too hot. Too shit hot. changes, it changes. Shit changes. I mean, oh. heat changes all heat these changes parts. changes everything. So we just want, you, want every guy, all, all you guys to be aware of that. You know, we're, we're home, we're doing all this stuff, but once damage starts to happen, you know, it's, it's, it's too late. Yeah, and once you late. start sending that oil full of bearing material through everything, I mean, it's gonna chew up everything. And, and the coyotes are the worst. All the little uh, uh, tensioners, adjusters, all the chains, everything that oil's got to go through. Cams, not even riding on bearings. The cams, I mean, it, man, it really starts chewing stuff up. I mean, so. <clears throat> I guess the moral of the story is just try to, try to be careful what you're doing. 
be mindful. Make sure you know. Make sure your water. Fill your water radiator. Fill your radiator. Make make sure it's circulating. You know, pull Take your the if cap you got, off. If you got a new motor, pull the valve cover off and just crank it, or at least wind it over. Make sure you got some oil coming out the damn rocker arms. I mean, we've seen so many things like this just destroy motor, complete motor, badass motor. Yeah. And it's. I mean, hell, it ain't nothing we done, and you know, I say the customer, you know, hell, everybody makes mistakes. Hell, I make mistakes every day, but we want we want people to be aware that what happens to a motor when you don't got the right amount of oil or water overhead, and, and, and the stuff that tune up tears up yes. is unbelievable. You can't just let anybody on your laptop. I mean, you, you know, I can carry a laptop, but I am by no means a tuner. You guys hear it here first. I mean, there, there's a there's a million things going on in these cars. I mean, you could have so many outside factors affected, and like Kevin said, you could be a quart low on oil and start tearing stuff up. And once stuff gets hurt, it's a slippery slope. So, I, all I know is one thing. I mean, you guys see it here on the channel. We talk about a bunch of different companies, uh, customer service, and the, the the quality product. And we only really run uh, and support the companies that we feel provide the best service that we get the best end result out of that we feel like we could be the most competitive that we could win with. Uh, TCAM is no exam or no exception to that. I mean, every time we come up here, all our engines, we make the most power. I mean, compared to anything else we've ever run, way more power, way more consistent, way more reliable. I mean, 300 passes on a race motor. I mean, it's unheard of. And uh, if you need anything, the support that they offer you guys up here. So that's, you know, one-stop shop for us for everything we do from, you know, consulting about parts, builds, setups, dyno tuning, track side support. I mean, really one stop shop, so. Thank you guys. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go to the dyno and see if we can blow this thing up now. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, he's gonna crank it. He's, you see how he asked me if you can crank it? time we were here we had some uh, converter issues there's just a used converter that wasn't quite happy Kevin called it I said no I was like Kevin the dynos broke and he's like no I'm telling you it ain't the dyno something's wrong with the converter and took the converter apart and lo and behold something was wrong in the converter so Kevin was right I have to make it public knowledge here that that process occurred so put a new stator in there send the converter back you guys saw us put it all in there we got it fired up um, there's like, we got like a small punch list before we can go to the track and get everything like really ready to, to go. But this is gonna be our big test. We can get through this in one piece successfully, which I feel like we can. Um, then we just gotta knock out just a couple little odds and things and then we're gonna be testing tomorrow. So, haven't been really leaning on this guy all that much. We made 2200 horsepower on 18 pounds of boost, but we had that converter issue. So, we got a looser stator in there Kevin's already been in there tuning on it a little bit. 
I poked around and changed like two things, but I don't even think my computer was hooked up to the Holly. So like, what was I doing really? You know, that's what I get. I made, I even made the title of the last video, me tuning and T O O N. And I was tuning because it was a joke because I didn't do anything. I know I did add some cranking fuel though. Kevin, I was spot on with the crank. You hear that thing fire right up? Tuner. So, all right, what's your strategy on this guy, Kevin? You get a big horsepower car in here. What are we doing? Well, we've already went through the basics last time. Yep. Verify time and go over to two, make sure everything's good. Now, Ben has already been here and you ain't missing anything, right? I know you don't tune in, but. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, no, no, I didn't mess with anything. <clears throat> so, pretty much we're gonna start where we left off. I'm gonna come off the brake, do like a 30, 60 foot simulated pull, and then we'll shut her down and kind of look. Hopefully, the converter's actually letting the motor accelerate. So, this is a looser stator than what was in there previously. So hopefully it's it's not like blowing through it. I wouldn't assume, I mean, you deal with M&M transmissions a lot. Mark's usually, I mean, he's done a bunch of these. Mark's, so. Mark's damn good. So he I said- I used to wear his ass out all years ago all the time. Oh, oh we, oh, got, we gotta keep that in the video. Oh yeah, he used to wear his ass out. <laughs> that was, that was back <laughs> I guess he said, he sent us two staters. He said, this one, shake the car down, go out there, learn the car, break it in, and then when you really want to get going, put the, the tighter stator in there, really tighten the converter up. I, we talked about prior, like there's no point for us to go out here and try to make 45, 4600 horsepower, which we feel like it should, because we're not gonna be able to use that power for a certain amount of time until we really get the car dialed in. Right, so my goal, I mean, you're the boss, but my goal is make sure everything works, works make sure the converter's actually doing what we think it should do, and then at that point, We'll make some power on them wrong. It should be relatively easy to make some power. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is make sure everything works and then we're ready to go to the track. Yeah. And we'll turn it on up at the track. Yep. And then once we get the stopping point of the track or sort of, hey, I mean, I'm talking weeks from now. Yeah. You're like, hey, man, let's, we might ought to put this thing back on and try to find some power. Yeah. Like, that's when we do that. So this is really like, and I guess, you know, you get some people like, if I brought the black sheep up here, we already have the car ironed out. We know what it's going to do. We can go up there and, you know, pour the coals to it. When we had the Speedmaster block, up here in in the red lobster we really just wanted to make it see how much we i wanted to see if it was going to break so we we turned it all the way up to where it could break i think it's got a little bit left in there but we made you know 2400 horsepower like it was nothing tkm powers and machine work that's the truth right there and uh you know but again i mean that's a perfect example we didn't have the chassis dialed in for that much power so it, it, you need some help yeah know. i mean i don't really know but i mean i'm assuming this car's got to be the chassis everything's got to be shook shaking out here so yeah oh yeah yeah well, like, when we go to the track we're gonna make like a 60 foot hit and pull the parachutes and make sure it, it drives and stops and steers and right. brakes and all that stuff so right. so that's right there's no point in shoving blowing the heads off over to crank mm -hmm. on the damn ground because you're not going to use that much power for future trip outings anyway yeah mm -hmm. yeah and yeah, uh, my goal is you know kevin's mr 411 i'm gonna be mr 410 here by the end of the weekend that's the goal that's the goal. So, <laughs> all right, Kevin, you can get tuned on this thing. Uh, I said in the other video, comment down below what you guys think it's going to make. You got to correlate it. It's the boost versus the horsepower. You can't just be like, oh, it's going to make 6,000 horsepower. Hey, it's going to make 1,000 horsepower. You got to get that boost number with it because they go hand in hand. I want to see, I want you guys to put your brains together. Those smooth brains that you guys got at home, I want those things turning and seeing what you guys can come up with. Boost number for horsepower. Let's ask our resident smooth brainer what he thinks <laughs> it's going to make. What's it gonna make? Boost? How much boost? And how much power? We're not leaning on it. I mean, no. Really? I mean, leaning on it. I'd say leaning on it. Probably Kevin, what do you think? Like thirty pounds? Is seventy pounds of boost? That's leaning on it. Like, I mean, Zip's got this turbo. How much boost are you running that thing? Uh, depends on what point in time, but um, that same turbo Zip's got. Yeah. I mean, I know this turbo goes over four thousand. How much boost? How much boost? I know boost is very subjective because boost is like. 70 pounds of boost? Okay, so. I'm going 3,500 horsepower at 45 pounds of What's boost. your guess? Boost, how much boost and how much power is it gonna make? What's your guess? Man, I don't know. I think if you make 45 pounds of boost, I'd say 3,400 horsepower is, is my guess on it. That's well, how much boost? 45 pounds. Mm -hmm. 45 pounds of boost, 3,500 horsepower. It's just like, I mean, like the black sheep. No, 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 I, I went, it's a price is right. I just, you're going to be over. You go, $1. <laughs> All right, well, let's see his guess. Let's see his, uh, 1,200 horsepower at uh, what? How it, much it's probably going to make like 1,200 horsepower uh, with the charge pipe off. So. <laughs> Why are you just, 
I'm waiting for your number. I just said we're going to take the charge pipe off and make 1,200. How many PSI was that at? Zero. Okay. Big NA guy. <laughs> Spicy in there. Yo, yeah, spicy in there. All right, y'all. We're going over the data log here with Kevin. Very similar to the the old setup or pulls that we were making. Uh, you click the button. Super labored. You guys can probably hear it. Like normally, when you let go of the button, you know, you get that big swing up in RPMs. And then the converter starts to couple and then it pulls, you know, pulls the motor back down a little bit and then you rock and roll from there. But this is, it's pretty much like a straight line, like, you know, gets up, you know, 4,800 RPMs on the chip when he clicks the button instead of going up and rolling over. It's just a straight line. Got to like, what, 6,500? 6,500. And just like flat lined. Um, and we don't really have a whole lot of power in it, but it's just acting like, like it should be able to drive right through that regardless, you know? So we're in the problem solving stage now. All right, y'all, we are gonna make our second rip here. I'm trying to diag everything, make sure everything's good. We're turning the blow off valve, open and close thing off. I'm gonna get a baseline without it, uh, to see how it spools. Um, trying to make more power, pull some more timing to get more boost off the line. Maybe trying to just get it over the hump. Maybe it just needs that much more power. It's a bigger turbo, like we're r and on this ourselves. So we're trying to get it all figured out. So we're gonna fire it up and make a rip. There's two sets of numbers on the balancer. Kevin pulled a plug. What's your what's your theory? What's your possible theory? I mean, I'm just wanting to make sure the timing is actually right on this thing. I mean, I know uh, it was set, but that don't mean the numbers on the dampers right. And I'm just trying to make sure it's right. Well, there's two. There's a uh, uh, well. What's that? Mm -hmm. the, the second wheel is the magnets. Yeah, it's an RCD. Well, I mean, you could go. Off, I would have went off of that one, but because yeah, did we go off that one? I don't know. I don't remember because that's where that's where the the magnets are. So that's where the sensor. Because the timing was, was set when it came here the first time. We just verified and it matched up. Like all right, we're good. But what if it uses the other number? Yeah. And if the timing is actually that low, that would explain why this thing is being curved. How low could it potentially be? Like, like I mean, it, it, I mean fifteen degrees off. I mean. uh, also, this thing is impossible to turn, and I have a, a one inch ratchet at this point, so. I didn't leg shake. <laughs> right there. Yeah. Alright. Oh, it's like, but I mean, I, it's definitely closer to that than the other two you've seen. Yeah, it could, so it's starting to go back down and you're like 10 degrees off. Yeah. All right, 
we are throwing the are we throwing the kitchen sink at it yet or we're just we're, we're making large multiple changes at once which everyone tells you not to do but we're doing it uh we're going up a lot in our dome pressure because we had 55 pounds of dome and only made 22 pounds of boost yeah it's like we got a leak but we smoked it last time yeah and had no problem yeah and we smoked the hot side too the exhaust side and it's not like the wastegates are leaking or anything um where you at with the plugs you you pulled a plug and looked at it well it's cold so egt says warm that's why i was thinking well damn it may be the time when you stop but you know well unless that mark's just totally wrong but it's got to be within a couple of degrees of my damn weld wrong <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna try it again we're gonna try to make a little bit more power here uh see maybe it's just something where it's got to get like over the hump like it doesn't want to make a little power it wants to make a lot of power so we're just going to you know throw i mean really it I don't know, it's acting kind of odd to me. I mean, all of the data and information I've gathered over the years tells me something's just not quite driving right. I think Kevin's on the same page, Matt's on the same page, Chris is on the same page. Just something is just acting off. Hey, nice little fireball. Get more hot there. <laughs> I didn't know that he had two sides like I did. All right, we're going through the, the we're exhausting all of our options. Uh, we actually called Roger from Hearts and um, we're just trying to get multiple opinions. We checked everything. We checked our CO2 lines. We smoked at the, the hot side, the cold side. We looked at plugs, EGTs, all this stuff. And I guess the common consensus is maybe the cam is off. Uh, and we're, we could tell by doing a cranking compression test. Um, so that's what Kevin's screwing in there right now. I mean, what, is, what does this pretty much tell? I mean, cranking comp compression, obviously. But if it's down, it, it could be like a valve events or happening at the incorrect time. Yeah, open the valve feed. Where you can see it. Have it. Yeah, I mean that's that's it, right? Kevin had a gauge; it showed thirty. I was ready to fight someone. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the gauge you use when you're tired of dying on the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one with the X on the back. <laughs> yeah, like you need to. That that's that's, that's the taking off the dial. That, it, it, the I wouldn't say the issue is that it's acting up because like they're they're going to act up. The issue is nothing's showing itself. So it's not. Like, up no reason. Yeah, it's not like pointing us <laughs> like, hey, this needs yeah, to be fixed or hey, rolling. this needs to be addressed. We rolling. Well, I'm gonna tell you, he don't want none of side bitch with them numbers. Ooh. Ain't that right, Tate? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin and I are getting our ass whooped all day. See, Kevin's got no part of this. I just bring him in, involved. Like he's just involved. We do this for fun. Some what did you say? You you're just trying involved. to figure out when the fun starts. Yeah, we starts. just never know when the fun actually starts. If somebody had <laughs> let us know. That'd be great. I ain't got there yet. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. We think we have a wastegate issue. If you guys, I'll play the clip again of the last pull, you'll see this side over here. Everyone thinks that the format um, is like flapping around from the 
turbo sucking in air and nine times out of ten it's well, i can tell you that doesn't happen but it's the dump tubes for the waste gates um when they hit the ground the air goes everywhere and it gets under this and flops it around we're swapping the actual waste gate because we can monitor this one with the sensor to see if it's opening uh and then that will tell us if we have an issue or not like something wrong with the waste gate itself so that's what we're doing right now the only problem is if it's any kind of reference issue, it's not going to follow the waste, the particular waste gate. No, but I don't see how it could be a reference issue because we're literally feeding CO2 into this. And it's a T and then right. that T goes over to that line. So, I mean, I feel like it's pretty common to T from one to the other. Yeah, I know. So I agree. it's not like it's something new, but. <sighs> yeah, I don't see how it could be. You need me to start holding that? Yep. It's one of those days, guys. This thing is really good. Yeah. We're going to have to swap this, I believe. Yeah. Because... What does it need? I mean, I might be able to, just for, for, for testing reasons, be able to leave that and just move this down. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, or it's fine and we'll just leave them where they are so we should just swap them anyways. Th th we, we know the answer to this. That's not a pressure sensor, it's a map sensor. So it's in bar, so it reads vacuum and it reads pressure. So that's why it's off. So we, ha yeah, well, I mean, that don't mean they put the right one in there. Hmm. Bro, mm -hmm. let me tell you, Kevin's got this new ritual he does when he gets really stumped. He goes and I don't know if I could say this on YouTube, but he kills a horse and then he digs a hole and puts it in there. And while he's doing that whole process, he's thinking about this. And he came back and we started while he was gone. Mason and I did absolutely mindless activity. You guys saw us swap the waste for literally no reason. OK, but when he got back, he's like, hey, let's put this, this sensor over here. So. We have a hundred psi. We have we have multiple sensors on this. So let's go over the so right sensor block. So CO two coming. You got we got we got a couple things. This is our CO two feed line, and it's reading on this first two hundred psi sensor right here. So this is like connected to the regulator. This is before the the boost controller has any effect on it. So it's reading this just to make sure verify we do have dome we do have CO two pressure. This is after it gets regulated to our desired dome pressure, and it comes up here into this T, and it goes to each wastegate it also gets referenced back to the sensor block sorry right here back to the sensor block right here this is not a 200 psi sensor like we have it set up in the computer it's actually a map sensor so the scaling was off so it was we were off quite a bit like we put 100 pounds of dome pressure and it would only make like 50 pounds of actual dome but we thought it was 100 so we're like man this thing should really be spicy well it's not when we're putting 20 pounds of dome pressure on it on the launch like which is I mean, Kevin, you're not ever putting six or seven or eight on anything. Don't pressure. It's all, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25, just to get to spool. Cause you gotta keep the wastegate shut. We knew the wastegates were open we didn't know why. But now look at this shit. We got it. Big brain Kevin over there got it out. Matt was like, hey, that might be a, you know, it might be labeled wrong. It could be a map sensor. Look at that shit. So we are, we should technically be in business. So we've just been running that thing soft as hell. Really. We hope, we think. We could be wrong, but we're, we're, we're definitely, we're, we're fixing shit, I guess.
Did you just see that fireball? That sounded better. That sucker's loud. Did you just damn. see that? Your sock? Better? Better? You see the fireball making? I think tried to party. Boy. Right. We actually made some horsepower there. I look at fuel consumption for everything because I know like how fast the sheep goes on a certain amount of fuel. That it, was it is fat though. So you know I don't think don't burst my bubble. Don't <laughs> burst my bubble. It made a lot it, it was the fuel consumption was high, but how did it feel like compared to what we were doing to where way we are better, now? Way better. That's that's what we looking for. Um boost has actually come in like one or two and boils down to the the sensor wasn't figure right. So yeah. we was getting half the dome is what we thought. Yeah. Which was I guess if we knew that we were running that little dome, we could kind of be like, oh, yeah, that's right. But when you start really stacking big numbers on it and it's not doing anything, you're like, we literally looked at everything front to back, head to toe, trying to figure it out. Yeah. But we're there now. We got it. So, well, Sometimes you got to break out the old handy-dandy mechanical gauge. <laughs> These sensors will get you all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a case of too much technology here? So, well, we got it working out good now. Kevin, what you, you spice the tune up a little bit more, clean it up. Play with fuel and you know clean the fuel up and time a little bit so we'll see leave the same boost ramp see what it does. Awesome! It sounded good. I mean, I'm I'm happy to see that. It's nice to. I mean, we've been we've been fighting this thing. The converter flashed like it should as well. For at least it sounded like it. What do you guys think? No, not not the not the the, I mean, the badass Camaro. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Literally the man said the heater's more badass than the third gen in front of him. Uh, there ain't nothing more badass than the third gen. <laughs> We are wrapping up here at TCAM Performance. Hey, thanks for your help yeah. today. Dave. John. Thanks for your help. We got it knocked out. It was a uh, it was a challenging day. It was a tough day. Big shout out to Kevin Mullins and the whole TCAM crew. Uh, they were here helping out, and Kevin put a lot of time and a lot of thought, and, and we, were, we, were, we were all stumped at one point, couldn't figure anything out, but we got through it, and that's what, you know, sometimes these cars that you really got to fight with, and, and they, they put up a fight, they are the most rewarding in the end, and that's what we're hoping for with Slick Rick. It's been a long build, and we're finally ready to go to the track, so I hope you guys are excited about it. Got some, uh, is this oil from us? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Was it clean before we got over here? Uh, it wasn't clean from the car before. I think that might have been from us from... Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I mean, it's possible. Yeah, we got, so we got a two-hour ride home. Me and you are taking the TKM toter back because Nasty Raps is going to have their way with it. Mason's driving the truck and trailer back. Uh, we're testing tomorrow 10 to 5, so we're going to get back there at midnight, 1 a.m. We're going to have to wake up at like 6.30 to... No, we are. We're going to have to wake up at 6.30 yep. and work on this thing for another hour. Dude, if you'd set your alarm... What? Good. You're not going to? Yeah, I'm good. Are you going to sleep in or are you going to wake up with us? I'll probably be up by 8, 8.15. No, no, you're waking up at 6.30. You're waking up at 6.30 and we got to get stuff knocked out because we got to be loaded up, ready to go with the toter because we're staying at the track this week too. So we got a lot to do. We got to hook the trailer up. We got to load the trailer, smart car, all that stuff. Damn. So we got to. How's this, how's this gonna work? It's it's gonna require you to be up early. No, 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 no. Because no. from Thursday night till Friday, how's that gonna work? What do you mean? It's my bed. <laughs> it looks like you're sleeping at the racetrack. <laughs> 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 so we're, we're literally going to leave the stuff at the track, go back to the shop, get the black sheep ready, and then bring that to the track. So too we got to... Too bad it's north for south. I can't even just stay there the whole weekend. I know, People I know. People be knocking on the door at 6 a.m. on Friday <laughs> morning. Hey, hey up. it's going to be early morning tomorrow. We're going to get it done, right? 6.30, my boy. Why don't we just do it tonight? Hey, I like it. We're, I like, hey, let's do it tonight. Staying up late beats the hell out of getting up early. Dude, say it again. Staying up, not that hard. Getting up, very So late. you want to put this car in the shop, fix what we have to fix, and then load it, it in the trailer take tonight. It all about an hour to fix everything we need. All right, look, hear me out, hear me out. You guys work on that tonight. I'll see you in the morning, all right? You ain't going to do nothing anyway. 
Damn, dude, why? Yo, I can't believe my man Dave is just ditching us. Like, he's just like, I said we gotta wake up at 6.30. He's like, I'll wake up at 8. I'm like, what is that about? Can you believe that? That's just, that's what sad you, right there. What do you expect? I hope the people in the comments really rip you apart for that. Hey, I mean, bottom of the barrel, what can I say? To be honest, I didn't expect anything more. From Dave? Yeah. Damn. 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 Yeah, All right. There's plenty of cars in there holding the concrete down. You don't have to do it. All right, y'all. I didn't tell any numbers on the dyno because I was just so preoccupied by getting it working. We didn't even film the dyno or anything. We ended up stopping at 40 pounds of boost, which is like half of its possible capable boost. We made, what was it, David, 32 and some change? 32.30 or something? I honestly am not sure. I think it was like 32.30 or 32.40. So 40 pounds of boost. We made 3,230 horsepower. So I'll go back through the comments and see who's close and try to get in touch with them. It's very difficult to get in touch with people. I did the giveaway the last time and I messaged the people and they don't message back. So it's tough to get them shirts like that. But you guys can get shirts and get double entries today over at ellisnasty.com. So don't forget, uh, we got some racing content coming up. Uh, when you guys see this video, it's Friday, our first double entry day of the giveaway 1200 horsepower Trans Am. That could be you with a white F body on the dyno. Go to ellisnasty.com. First link in the description below. We'll see you guys in tomorrow's upload. Thank <laughs> you.